Welcome to the Diversity Pivot Podcast. I'm your host, Julie Kratz, and this season we will be unpacking real trends, hot topics in the workplace around allyship and inclusion. Our goal is that each week you leave with tangible tools, information, practical strategies that you can take back to allies with your organization. Let's dig in to this week's topic. Hey listeners, the hot topic I've got for this week, and this is one that happens a lot, a lot, it's honestly a little bit of a pet peeve of mine, if it's a pet peeve of yours. We ask human resource leaders a lot. Um, I want to say human resources leaders that are folks with HR in their job title, chief people officers, (laughs) the folks that are (laughs) in charge of the uh, human element of the workplace, which I would like to think we all are. But they are very likely, in the absence of a DEI leader, to absorb the tasks and responsibilities of DEI. And the reason I think this is really unfair is that if anything else was important in our business, we wouldn't just we wouldn't just un- unintentionally give somebody a task that they're not equipped to do themselves. The challenge specifically with DEI is there's not a lot of certification programs. You know, until recently, there haven't been college degrees or graduate programs designed to address DEI education like HR has been traditionally at business schools for decades. So there's a gap and HR leaders often get involved, or I like to say voluntold, (laughs) volunteered without being asked to manage DEI at their organizations without the necessary skills and resources to support DEI. So if this is you or someone you know or a colleague or your organization, you've seen it happen. I have a few ideas for you that I've seen work really well because there are absolutely some tremendous chief people officers and HR leaders that are doing great DEI work. So it's not that this can't be done. I think it just has to be more intentionally thought through especially for smaller organizations. If you only have hundreds of people, not thousands, you know, I don't always see the need for one dedicated DEI person. It really should be embedded throughout the whole organization anyway. So if that's you, um, first, I would start with your own education. Okay, so there's a plethora of certification programs out there. Unconscious bias, of course, is probably the most popular. I really like cultural intelligence. I I also like psychological safety programs. Uh, There's lots of different ways to invest in yourself. Um, We've had our Lead Like an Ally program for years to address this need. Um, I also put together a LinkedIn learning library um, that you can check out. Um, that I recommend um, on my LinkedIn profile. And it's a lot of vetted courses from inclusive language to DEI strategy. So um, if that's a helpful resource for you, just check me out on LinkedIn. So start with your own education. What don't you know? What don't you understand yet? (laughs) And how can you fill in the gaps? Step two, once you've done a fair amount of education, I don't think certification is necessary, but if that makes you feel more confident or that's something that's really valuable to you, you know, by all means, that's a personal choice. The next thing you need to do is make sure you have a budget and uh, an appropriate budget. I am floored when I meet with folks and they just have a budget for, you know, food at an event, but we're not going to pay speakers. You know, we wouldn't do that in other parts of our business. And if we're going to take this seriously, it takes time to evaluate processes, deliver education programs, invest often in outside consultants or speakers. So make sure that you have an appropriate budget. Otherwise, it'll just be a check the box one and done. And that feels really icky and gross to people in the organization. And you'll get burnt out and frustrated with the lack of progress. An option for this, especially if you're a smaller organization, we call it right size content. So this is the idea that it's more of a sprinkle. (laughs) And we saw this, right? We pulled out the big hammer in 2020 and 2021. That created a backlash. So what I'm seeing now is more of a sprinkle approach. And this isn't to minimize DEI work. It's just being more clever and intentional with consistent set of communication. So we're building discussion guides for all employee meetings, giving frontline managers tools to facilitate conversations about inclusion. So you don't have to be there every time something goes wrong. Um, So vetted videos, articles, books, 
Um, LinkedIn learning, again, getting content in people's hands that they can take action on. So once you've done your own education, got a budget, <laughs> an appropriate one, probably a good one, uh, to do what you need to do. And it's over time, you know, you don't need to ask for all the money year one to think about how that could be a line item that is replenished each year. Make sure you have a seat at the table too. So if DEA is nested in HR, the HR leader has to be at the C-suite table. And, you know, I've seen thought leaders like Brene Brown, she won't work with an organization that if HR is not at the C-suite, because you basically said people aren't important here. So if you are in that position, make sure that you have visibility, that people at C-suite understand this is a problem, because without senior leadership support, DEI efforts um, wane. Um, so you need to have their support. You need to have that visibility. That's a non-negotiable. Uh, fourth idea, engage your allies. Ally networks are really powerful, especially middle managers. We call that the magic middle. Sometimes <laughs> my clients call them the frozen middle. <laughs> Wherever you're at, find a way to tap into leaders. You know, reiterate the message that this isn't a rescue cape, save the day situation. It's it's really one you know, act of inclusion. It's the everyday subtle intentional acts of allyship that matter. But these managers, they need tools, they need information. There's high rates of burnout. So if you can connect this to this, will help you do your job better and have less burnout, the more inclusive you are. And um, that really drives in on a key need, um, a key challenge that they're facing. And we know inclusive work environments have much lower turnover, which is also something that's plaguing middle manager right now. So really hone in on what their challenges are and how inclusion can help them do their jobs more effectively. Last idea for now, and there's so many more I would add um, for HR folks diving into this space, is measure impact. Um, you have HR data, <laughs> and it may not be high quality data. You may wish you had more. I, I get it. Start with what you got. What do you have on representation? What do you have on perceptions of inclusion? What do you have on activity level? Start there. And then if you don't have what you need, think about how you could build a system to better address representation throughout the organization, not just the front lines, not just the whole, not just leadership, but you know several levels, depending on the size. Pay equity reporting, pay transparency is a huge issue, huge issue, especially for younger folks coming into the workforce. It seems ridiculous to them that people would be paid differently for the same set of experience or skills. Skill-based hiring is really popular. Um, promotion ratios, that's some really compelling data. I promise you will find gaps there. Hiring numbers, perceptions of inclusion on surveys um, that you have from employee engagement surveys, which we talked about before. Not a great bellwether, but certainly look at what you have versus what you don't have. Because what we know, if you measure this, the number one reason employees leave organizations is because of toxic work environment. So there's there are some nuggets there. There are some ROI numbers there. Um, so just think about think about these ideas. If you or someone you know is managing HR and DEI, which is extremely common, you're not alone, invest in your own education, right? Advocate for the resources you need. Make sure you have a seat at that leadership table and you have C-suite engagement. Get more allies, especially the middle, middle bands of organizations, and measure the impact of the work you're doing. Because if we're not trying to solve a problem with DEI, again, it will come off unintentional um, and may cause more harm than good. So set up the pro program for success, know what success looks like, and resource it and get that leadership at the table. Thanks, y'all. Be back next week. Thank you for listening to the Diversity Pivot Podcast. My hope is that you walked away with a tangible tool, insight, or information that you can share with other allies on the journey. If you liked this week's episode, please leave us a review. Your feedback means a tremendous amount to us. We'll be back next week with another hot topic.